Welcome to part one of the Changing Ideas About the Universe videos. I'm making this video to review ideas about the geocentric and heliocentric models of our solar system. And as well as that, I'll be including revision about the different ways that we have to get evidence about our universe. Then in part two, I'll focus on the theories about the origins of our universe to complete our astronomy revision. With the P1 exam getting very close, I'm making these videos for the after-school revision regulars who seem to keep asking for space revision. Remember, other videos are already made that link here are the lenses, redshift and stars videos. The first observations beyond our world were made just with the unaided naked eye. Our eyes can detect the Earth's natural satellite, the Moon. The Earth's source of energy, our nearest star, the Sun. As well as all those other stars out in the night sky. We can also detect with our eyes the five brightest planets, including Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. All of these planets can be seen if you know when and where to look. So, ideas about our place in the universe go right back to before Ptolemy in AD 101 to 179. Ptolemy used his observations of the night sky to build on the ideas of Aristotle. Remember, these observations were made of the night sky without the problem of light pollution. He believed that the Earth was at the centre of our solar system. He thought the moon orbited Earth and that as you travelled out from Earth, you would pass the moon, Mercury, Venus, the Sun, Mars, Jupiter and finally Saturn. His observations from Earth had told him Everything was orbiting around Earth and this model of our solar system is called the geocentric system with the Earth at the centre of everything. Ptolemy's ideas were believed for the next 1,400 years until the time of Copernicus who lived between 1473 and 1543. It was in Copernicus's opinion that the Sun was at the centre. He proposed the heliocentric model. From his measurements he agreed that the Moon orbited the Earth and he also agreed with the planet order of Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. But he put Earth between Venus and Mars orbiting the Sun like all of the planets were. The Church did not like this idea and it took nearly a hundred years till after Copernicus's death for people to start to respect his views. Then in 1610, Galileo developed the telescope. Since then, visible light has been used to learn about the universe using both refracting and reflecting telescopes. And there's more about both of those in my lenses video. Since the 1850s, photography has allowed us to capture images from telescopes and study them in even more detail, making measurements from them. Like this famous image taken by the Hubble telescope, which is orbiting the Earth to produce clear images without the problems of the atmosphere in the way. But visible light isn't the only electromagnetic wave that we use. We also use gamma ray telescopes to detect things like supernova, X-ray telescopes, ground-based radio telescopes using radio waves to detect pulsars or neutron stars. This is a good time to remind you about watching the stars video for your revision of the birth and death of stars. And so, as well as using visible light and gamma rays and x-rays and radio waves, we also can image using infrared radiation and ultraviolet radiation. 
And to point you forward to part two of this video series, remember, we also can use microwave detectors. This image of cosmic microwave background radiation is very important in part two. But we must get back to 1610 because all this modern technology, using even computers now to analyse the information from all these different telescopes, we have to go back to 1610 where Galileo is using his telescope to get two pieces of evidence for the heliocentric model. His first bit of evidence was the phases of Venus and the second, the four moons orbiting Jupiter. This was the evidence that disproved the Earth was in the centre of our solar system, upholding the theory of the heliocentric system with the sun at the centre and the planets orbiting the sun and the planets having also moons that orbit them. Then in 1666, Newton added his ideas about gravity to explain why the planets move as they do around the sun. So Earth, part of the solar system orbiting the sun, and as telescopes improved, we were able to see further and further, gaining evidence of what was beyond Saturn. My way of remembering it, my very evil monster just sucked up noodles. It used to be my very evil monster just sucked up nine people, but then Pluto got reclassified as a dwarf planet in 2006. It's one of five dwarf planets in our solar system, well, until there's more discovered. Other discoveries have taught us that there are asteroids, most of which are between Mars and Jupiter, and that there are comets made mostly of ice moving in highly elliptical orbits. And as time has gone on, we've developed better and better technology. We send space probes unmanned to collect even more evidence. Some probes are flybys, like Mariner 10 from 1974 and 75 exploring Mercury. Others orbit the planet, orbiters like Venus Express, which was launched in 2015 and is still out there. Then there's landers, like the Viking lander of 1976, which took samples from the surface of Mars. And then there are the ones that can move around a planet, the rovers, like Spirit and Opportunity, from 2004 taking samples on Mars. So that's the end of part one. I hope you tune back in for part two, because you know that... Regular, regular review gets a better grade for you! Don't forget to... Like! So that I can keep making the videos. Comment! Especially to request other revision topics. Subscribe. So you can get notifications of when my next video gets uploaded. <laughs> <laughs>